Welcome back, Hunters. I'm the Survival of this, and we return to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Last episode, we took down the Dolomadur, the long drag-out fight that it was, but we managed to succeed and finished him off. So this has opened up a few new quests, as well as some new, well, sort of new monsters to go after. We're going to take a little break from the big bad Elder Dragons to go back to a bit of a furious monkey. As a little bit of like a recuperation hunt in a way. So I've gotten uh, Ukanlos unlocked, Vitalis unlocked, there's the Crimson Fatalis quest in the village as well, and there's Furious Rajang, which we'll be doing today, and then I think I also have to do a regular Kirin high rank hunt as well. So I do have some options, but once those are done, I think we will be prepped to properly go into the G rank series. It's been a long time coming, and because there's so much content to cover, I'm just going to do the single monster showcase hunts each episode. Just try to get through this and get into G rank, so... I'm not going to be doing anything special in certain quests like Bet Your Life to go after two monsters at once or stuff like that. I've got way too much content to uh, deal with really on its own than to try going after a lot of that stuff. I think we're all set, so we're going to do Seek the Hide from... This is a Furious Rajang. The reason you can tell is, again, the icon, even if it just says a regular Rajang. I just want to double check, because I... Uh, I know there is a Rusted Kushala Deora, but I can't remember if you can hunt it in high rank or not. So I might have to look into that just to try to make sure, again, I've shown off each monster in a video or so. But we're all set, so let's go... Uh, let me just double check. I've got... Yeah, okay, I should be good. Let's go off and ta tackle Furious Rajang. But in the Dolomadur fight, I was mentioning a lot about... Like, it doesn't feel like a good Monster Hunter fight, and there's issues with it. The biggest thing for me came down to that... Uh, the fireballs falling from the sky. Like, the rest of the hunt kind of works as Monster Hunter, but that doesn't at all... And I'm going to explain a little bit more this episode about that. And I'm going to compare it with Kirin, because the two have a bit of a similar attack style there. The big difference for Dalmadur is there's not really a movement or a cue or anything associated with it, aside from roaring, that has the fireballs coming down on your location. It's oftentimes just at random, they're all concentrating around your area. Kirin, at least you can tell the lightning attacks are... a kind of like sourced from him and his and its movements and attack patterns are what kind of like cause them to happen whereas Dalmadur I do apologize for going a bit silent for a moment there it's just we're starting into this hunt and Furious Rajang is a monster you want to keep your eyes on quite often Yeah, so that ticked him off. No, oh, are you going to have him pinned? No, I don't think so. Okay, does he do... No, he doesn't have the multiple pinball attack like Generations Ultimate gives him. At least I don't think yet. Yeah, but he's definitely got a bit more speed on him than a regular Rajang does. But I... Okay, that was close. <laughs> oh crap, I do not like that I cannot see... Oh, there he is. I was going to say, I don't like that I lost vision of him, so I don't know what it's up to. That's another thing about, like, what makes a good monster hunter fight, is you can see what the monsters are kind of up to. You can have these cues to know what's coming in, what you have to do to respond. It doesn't have to be, like, super slow or you get a lot of time to do... Ow, that hit like a freaking truck. God, I was not expecting, like, that charge to do as much damage as it just did. Okay, there. Oh, actually, I don't have the... Oh, that's right, this set has the negative health trait on it. So it doesn't have the full health that we're used to from... Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Okay, that ticked them off again. I don't really like... Yeah, see, one of the problems with Calico being somewhere over here is that at least if I have a general idea where the cats are, I can know where the attacks are going to line up to, like, what they're going to go after. So as long as I stay over to the right here... Okay, I'm going to try to get over to his side a bit more. Just so this way I know I have the cats both over there and any attacks. I can stay to one direction to avoid them. Uh-oh. Ah, he's got a boulder out, but yeah, you can go after Runa with that. I really got to be careful of that charge, though. Like, the Lightning Blast is going to be a one-hit kill for certain, but that's easy to read, and I can respond pretty reliably to that. It's going to be like the little side hop charge that he does, which will be able to get me good. Okay. Um, I don't know who he's going to be chucking it at. Okay. Oh! Again, just want to be careful, but yeah, Monster Hunter excels at giving you this back and forth of being able to know what your the monster's doing, how you can respond, what openings you have, if any, to like strike, evade. Dalmadur, my problem with it is because of its like artificial thing of like just the fireballs coming down on your location that reliably or that frequently. It doesn't feel like it's something really tied to him. It's just like an artificial ad an artificial addition to the fight that isn't really there to show off the monster, show what it's capable of, what it can do. It's more so just like a filler attack to give it more reason to be able to strike you. Not even that it's like it striking you. It's just, again, an MMO feature in a way to say like, don't be over here. Okay, and this is not a good area to be. And one of the things, too... I... Oh, crap. Okay, should not be that close to a Furious for Zhang when he's in Berserk mode and angry, but I'm not a, exactly a smart hunter. Oh! His planet needs him. Off he goes! But, okay, where was I? Do, 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 do. I was just on something about the Dalmadur fight. Again, it feels like just an MMO addition fight, or addition to the fight doesn't really feel tied to the monster itself. I don't mind so much that it might be a long fight, like say his hit zones aren't the best or that. But I do... Monster Hunter has had that problem where the in-game information has been very lacking for, like, how you're supposed to do certain fights or go after certain monsters. Basically, everything up till World and Iceborne had a bad thing of not really giving you information in-game what you should be doing for certain fights. <clears throat> and that's where I really have to uh, applaud what they did with Iceborne, or World, Iceborne, and Rise where they finally made the Hunter notes actually pertinent to the game. Okay, now you're down here. Okay, if you want to be down here, we'll be down here. Like, before the Hunter notes didn't really give you any information on, like, anything to the monster aside from name and a little description. It would let you track their sizes, like, if they were... Actually, I don't know if they did let you... I don't think the Hunter Notes really did all that much, did they? But they got changed in... Oh? 
Then you got a spitball to get out. Okay, gotta be careful what he's up to here, but if I stay over with... Uh, this is kind of tight quarters, but at least... Ow. Ah, I shouldn't have been over here. I was trying to keep kind of associated around the cat so I knew where my safe areas were. Like, what direction to be dodging if he did the super beam. Okay. Let's see what he's up to. Okay, I want to get some out. Oh, well, that's some distance, but not the distance I was trying to get. <laughs> See if I can get him to, yeah, go for a super beam or two, and that'll give me an opening to. Okay, there's that made. Yeah, it's one of his most dangerous moves, but it's so easy to read that you can actually use it as one of your best opening devices, or one of your ways to know you'll have an opening to be safe from him. His weak spot's probably going to be the head, but I don't know oh, how reliably I'll be able to get it with him being... Oh, he's coming down. There he is. Yeah, try to be out of the way of that charge, because that's brutal. Try not be too close to him, too, because he has a lot of ways to punish you with those fists. I'm not sure if Furious Rajang's tail is, like, the big weak spot I should be aiming for as well, like how he got his treatment in... Actually, no. In Iceborne, they had the tail completely cut off, I think. There wasn't even, like, the stub left behind. What the heck are you doing up there? Oh, chucking the map at us. I was trying to figure out why you ran all the way up there. Uh-oh. That's what I wanted to see. Get some good shots in at his face there. Oh, is he moving? Yeah, he's going off to visit his people again. Okay, so that looks like we want to go over this way. I don't know if he'd be going off back the area he was just in. I think it's more this direction. I'm trying to think there's anything else I want to come on from Dalmadur. Like, I was in the Hunter note. I was getting to the Hunter notes and that. The best thing you can do for, like, a game like Monster Hunter is to give you information on the monster before the hunt. So that way you can see, like, okay, weak zones are this. I should try aiming here or attacking with this kind of element. Give yourself a bit of prep beforehand so that way you can feel like you have some idea about what you should do. You might not know like the attack patterns or anything like that, but just having a little bit of information on what you could or should be focusing on really makes a big difference in a game like this. And that carries over so true on like big health tanks like uh, Jan Moran, Daren Moran, the big guys who take a lot of punishment, and if you aren't dealing the damage to, like, the certain weak zones, you really will suffer for it. Another thing is, uh, when it comes to, like, weak zones too, sometimes if you break spots, they actually become new weak zones, like Vasarios, Gravios is a prime example. Once you break the chest, those guys become much easier if you can get the tax in there. Dalmadur, though, he's kind of the opposite, I think. 
Because again, once you break the head and he's out of like the enrage, I think that doesn't become a weak spot anymore. But it's just more concise information about the monsters in game is always a benefit to have. You don't have to detail like the attacks or know what they're going to do move wise. But you should be able to get information about what they are a little bit before the hunt. So you can say, take this weapon instead of that one. Bring this element instead of that one. Where on the monster I should be trying to attack. Okay, so I'm going to pull up part of the map. Okay, how much more health you got left in you? Because we shouldn't have too much with everything we've done so far. And this is the Grave Cannon. So it has a very good amount of like uh, raw damage for the Bowgun too. On top of the normal up, we should be doing a fair amount of damage to him. Oh, that's a perfect attack to use, bud. Thank you. Oh, I... I sh... That's the problem. I wasn't sure which way he was going with that. I don't know if he was going to try for Calico or me. And that's why I like to try to keep the cats at a certain direction to know, okay, this is the safe way to go. That was just me being a bad hunter there. We'll take the normal two. Uh, I don't know why they give you pellet up or pellet shots. Like, I don't know if they didn't realize that pellet's not as good as it actually is in the game or what, but yeah, for some reason the box always gives you pellet shots. And I don't know why. It did actually give us uh, Pierce 2s up against Alamadur, so they knew you needed that powerful of a shot against him, but every other hunt, they basically just give you pellet, and I don't understand why. It's really not a good shot type. But I'm guessing Furious has to be pretty close to being dealt with. I can't imagine he's going to have much more health left in him. We've gotten the horns broken, we've been getting decent damage to his face. It's just little slip-ups like that where you can really get yourself put into bad situations. Okay, so he's not here. Maybe the next area. Oh, no, that's right. The I sometimes forget the Ancestral Steps layout, because it's a little bit wonky for how you go about, like, area to area at times. I gotta go here and then up, and that'll get me to the central area. Oh, here he is. No, actually, that might be him, well, maybe trying to limp off there. Yeah, that is him trying to limp out. Again, as long as you can keep your cast to one direction, it gives you a better idea of which direction you can dodge freely in. It's a little bit of understanding your positioning and where to be that will make big difference for gunning. Okay, so I know Runa's to my left, so I can keep dodging freely to my left again now, because... Yeah, and that keeps me safe from the beam. I do gotta be careful, because I was dodging towards Runa there. Okay, but here I'm free to dodge to the left if he were is going to do the beam. Seems like me- oh, there we go. 
I was going to say, it seems like maybe once it gets to really low health, it starts doing the, like, uh, boulder toss more often. But that was our Furious Rajang taken down. Not too much different than a regular Rajang, just faster and angrier. But that is literally all his name is, and what he boils down to. But we've got some nice materials from him. I'm probably going to try to get Kirin Hunt next, so that way that wraps up like those. And then I think it is going to be Ukonlos, Fatalis, and Crimson Fatalis. Ironically enough, I think Fatalis and Crimson might be... Even if I don't kill them, I might be able to repel them. Oh, excuse me there. I think I can repel them, and that'll still, like, be the quest completed. So I'll try that. So e they're going to be easier than Dalmadur, which is ironic in a way. Dalmadur, again, he's just... There are things that could be so improved on him. But yeah, he's not a good Monster Hunter fight at his current incarnation. I do think you could make him one, like, a good siege fight with some tweaks to... How, like, you encounter him, stuff like that, stuff about, like, where he positions and that. He does need a redesign from, like, ground up quite a bit, though, for him. Uh, do, 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 do. Ah, nah. I mean, I guess I'll take that for the three slots, but not really worth it. Current hunter rank is 72. 73! Yeah, so there was Rajang, or Furious Rajang taken care of. They don't really distinguish them in the Hunter Notes, but... Yeah, I'll just quickly pull up the Hunter Notes to show you guys again. Like, it's kind of ironic to call this, like, monster info, because you don't really get much on it. Like, literally, this is all you get. Is, uh... Icon, a little bit of text, the hunted amount, the threat, and... Flavor. That's it. Nothing more! Nothing like tips or tricks or anything, or... Weaknesses, strengths. There was a lot of you were on your own, or you had to Google and figure stuff out on your own. It's one of the things that I am very glad that Monster Hunter is doing more of, like putting concise information in the game. Though I do think they should have done a little bit better of a job when it came to when they first did the Iceborne Alatrian. That you should have gotten the Hunter Notes before the hunt, because it has such a specific way of how you hunt it, or how you deal with its abilities. Hiding the information till you fail like a few times is not a good way to convey a fight's information to you. And I also do wish Dragon Shot was done, but yeah, I'll talk about that in another video. We'll see if there's actually anything I can make new for... I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't really look like it. I was just going to check to see if Furious Rajang gave us anything. Oh! Actually, I can preview some of the gear. I don't think it's... Yeah, we're probably pretty familiar with the... Oh, yeah, it's not really good. Gloves off and Spirit's not really that good. Kushala Grip. Oh, uh, no. I'm looking for... Yeah, here we go. So, I'll try to find... Oh, actually, they're right above me. So you can see the only real difference... Well, actually, I don't even know. Ironically enough, I think these puppeteer gloves were meant to be for the crusher braces. Because if you look between... Actually, there's not that big of a difference between them, is there? I thought there would be, like, a little more emphasis on, like, the gold coloration, but there's not. Let me check the waist. Do I have that? Uh, no, I don't have that to show off. Okay, I was hoping I would have something. Yeah, like, I thought you would have seen, because it's from Furious Rajang, you would have had a little bit more hints to, like, the gold to it, but you don't really, huh? Okay, well, again, that was Furious Rajang. Next episode, I'm going to try to get a Kirin high rank quest to just show that monster off, so we can say we've shown the roster. And then we're going to be back into the big Elder Dragon levels threats again, like Ukonlos and the Fatalises. But thank you guys for joining me on this episode of the series. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give a like, and if I'm in comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in comments right down below. Until I do see you in the next video, hunters and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.